Ross, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. I think it's been an incredible journey, as you said earlier. Uh, Milsov was in the making for the last eight years. For the first six, nobody wanted to know you, or nobody knew you. Nobody last knew two us. years, yeah. everybody wants to know you now. Yes. So uh, let's start with Milsov and you know how you think it evolved and where it is now. Yeah, so uh, MuleSoft started actually as an open source project um, called Mule, which is our software, our flagship software we, we run today on our customers. And um, the original goal was to make it easier to connect enterprise applications and systems together. That sort of evolved um, because as we've seen the, the rise of cloud, SaaS, mobile, social, and now devices, this notion that everything needing to connect in order to drive more value to consumers or our partners or create you know, value networks around our organization is really where new enterprises are focusing their attention. And the Mule platform um, is really the best thing on the market for connecting all those things together. Uh, when you look at the broader market and you see the competition cropping up, because once MuleSoft is out there in the domain and uh, others are, are there trying to compete with you, uh, how do you address those competitive needs in the market? Yeah, I, I think our focus is less on competitors and more looking at what we think the industry is going to need in the next three to five years. Um, and what that really means is, is understanding our customers, understanding what they're trying to do today, but also where they're going to need to go tomorrow and the challenges of getting there. And I think a lot of our customers today actually buy into not just our software, but also our vision of how you know, on-premise and cloud-based systems will, will exist or coexist inside the enterprise to deliver new business channels and business revenue. But there are hundreds of thousands of APIs being written every day. Yes. Right? How do you incorporate all these to make it a, 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 a good solution for the company? So what we've done, we've taken the, uh, the API and really productized the endpoint. So if you think about when you talk to another application, you're actually talking to a, a third party that exists outside your data center. It has a different set of data. It has a different set of um, information about that data. And what our platform does is allow you to bring all that into a unified way of actually connecting that to something else. So it's a simple idea. And APIs really are the catalyst to help us drive that kind of strategy. Um, and it was something that wasn't really possible maybe five years ago before SaaS. But now you can, you can do it thanks to sort of innovations in the cloud and now devices are going in the same direction. So for us, it's, it's not about keeping up the competition, but looking ahead at what the customer needs. And I think as long as we keep doing that, we're always going to be outflanking the older guys who can't move as quickly and the newer guys who haven't got the credibility in the marketplace or the, the domain expertise that we have. So the two ways of looking at innovation, one is you know you create a uh, new product, new technology, and you educate the customers. The other is the customer demand is already there. You go and find out what that is, and you try to address the particular niche market needs. Yes. Uh, in your case, I'm assuming it's a combination of both. Uh, it going is. up, you know, to where you are. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can sh you know, help share with us in a couple of challenges where you saw this opportunity coming. Yeah. So I, I think the key there is is that at some point the customer doesn't know everything that they need but you don't want to run so far ahead of the customer that they, they can't identify with the product that you're selling them. Um, so our whole strategy, and I presented this earlier, is you know, we've, we've layered one thing on top of another to add more and more value to the organization and the things they're trying to do today and tomorrow. Um, so that started with integration. Then it went into service orientation. And now with APIs and connecting um, systems in from the cloud, it's around how to create new channels to deliver either more innovation internally or um, business value externally or to connect systems together to uh, automate business processes. Those things all matter and, and we juggle an act of providing a platform that allows you to do all of those in one, one uh, unified way. One thing uh, that will be good to learn for emerging entrepreneurs from you is when you started out, as all entrepreneurs, you have uh, an in-depth experience in a particular technology and you find, like I said, you know, a need in the market. But those two things aren't just enough to you know, start an enterprise. You have to have something more beyond that. Yeah. What is it that gives you the confidence and the opportunity to say, now this is the time for me to take the leap from being a professional to becoming an entrepreneur? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I think it's very personal from one entrepreneur to another um, how that plays out. The key one I was talking about today is you, st you have to understand the problem and love the problem. You know, if you, if you have those two things, it gets a lot easier to sound more credible when you're talking to people about your idea who, you know, in the first 
well actually the whole life cycle of the business will be challenging your idea and saying why do I need this or is this the right way or you know why don't I just get this from X so I think it's, a, it's just a mix of domain expertise a real passion for solving that problem a level of tenacity that you know when you really hit some hard you know hard roadblocks you'll somehow get over them and uh, actually a bit of luck you know luck uh, is is with every entrepreneur in, in that sometimes you get the wrong timing or you you don't have quite the right product or um, you just didn't hold on long enough or, or maybe you were just too early so th this is why this is an art and not a science I mean it, and, and some people it will work for other people it won't I know I'll never be able to work for some, you know, another company myself ever again. I, and I knew that I even when I started the first you know, 10 years ago. When you look at uh, the emerging entrepreneurs, the big question or the bigger question they have is, you know, when will I and how will I find my funding to go forward? And the entire focus is on funding. And yeah. when you ask these successful entrepreneurs like yourself, they never talk about funding. They talk about solving a problem. So how do you help them understand that funding will come if you are focused on a particular challenge? It's, it, it's sort of chicken and egg problem, I guess, but um, in reality, funding's easy. Um, it's very easy to raise uh, seed funds. It's very easy to raise even A funds. The way funding works is really simple. Um, you've got to have something that someone can believe in. And the only thing people believe in is if they can recognize a problem and see that you could have a solution to it. So that's why the problem always matters above everything else. The raising the funds, especially in Silicon Valley, is, is very straightforward. And I think even now in the rest of the world, certainly in London, it's gotten a lot easier. East Coast is a lot easier. Um, but yeah, it's, if you focus on understanding the problem and the business model, getting the funding will be easy because your story will make sense to enough people they'll fund it. Building a startup and growing it and you know, scaling it to the level where you are and beyond that, you need the right resources, talking about human resources. Um, how important and critical is it? Because I think they also evolve and change at each stage, but you need those people because one thing that is constant is innovation yes. in companies like US. So how do you keep up with that? Um, well, I, I think it's innovation is culture. So always, and I kind of regret not doing this well enough um, and you always do this, you look back. I wish early on I'd really set the culture of our company. Uh, I think I'd assumed the culture and, and then, um, you know, as you grow, if you have those pillars of what your culture stands for, it gets much easier to instill that culture in many more people. And we're going through that right now. Luckily, our CEO is doing a very good job of doing that. And that's one of his, I think, his real core strengths. Um, and yeah, as you grow as quickly, and we grow very, very quickly, and we have been the last four years, it does get hard because some people are not as a good fit in the market, in, in, in the company as they were two years ago, but naturally they either find another place in the organization or, or they, they pop out. But typically, it's a lot easier when things are going well. <laughs> so if things are going well, then people either find something else to do or just realize it's not right for them. When it's not going well or the culture's not right, it becomes a much bigger problem for the company. What was personally your moment to decide to jump into entrepreneurship? Was it to because you could get the opportunity to be your own boss and lead a company, or the opportunity to take the challenges of the society and, and address them? Yeah, I mean, I, so Mule, before MuleSoft, I had a consultancy company. Um, so I created the software, and what I was doing is I was doing consultancy services to banks in London, and, and I grew that to about 20 people in a space of four months. And I realized that the demand for the software completely outweighed the way I was addressing the need for that demand. Um, so for me, it was very natural. I'd already started a consultancy company. And for me, it was just, I've created this software. I should really now go and help people get successful with it. It wasn't even a conscious, I'm going to become an entrepreneur. It was just I saw the need and I, I, I went with it. Um, the, the, there was a conscious decision to raise funds. and. That was really easy. What happened was, I, in my first company, I created a business plan about five months in, and I realized the business plan over three years didn't look very attractive, and, I, and straight away, I real, you know, the only way really to do what I wanted to do was to go to San Francisco and, and actually raise uh, VC capital. Finally, um, what is the next step now for Millsock? Where do you see the next trajectory in the next one year? The one year is simple. We're going to, you know, uh, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. We're powering many companies right now to help them bring SaaS applications into their data center. We're also helping other companies get out of their data center. So the likes of 
uh, Disney have declared they want to get out of the data center business in 10 years, and we have a cloud platform that helps them connect those applications as they move them out. So we're doing a lot more of that. Um, and the next big thing as I was talking around is really APIs, helping companies understand how the business and IT work together to unlock value and deliver new business initiatives together. And our platform is becoming a bit of a catalyst to get those two conversations happening in the, in the organization, which, which is you know, part us, but also part the whole industry realizing that we have to do things differently because the, there's this new economy happening. Ross, wishing you continued success. All the best. Thank you. For the Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks.